Hey everyone, my name is Matt. I'm the product lead for Hangouts Chat. And I'm gonna start today by talking to you about Teams because I strongly believe that Hangouts Chat is the single most impactful thing you can bring to your organization to improve team efficiency, efficiency, effectiveness, both of them, and also uh, team happiness. So let's, um, let's jump into Teams. When I think about Teams, I think about two key things. First of all, it's about people. Second thing is about culture. Um, chat cannot fix your people person problem. That's a, um, that's a hiring thing. You guys can all work on that. But it can definitely impact culture because culture broadly breaks down into two areas. One is around values of the organization, so the values which leadership drives across the organization, the values of the people that you hire. The second thing is around communication and the way that people work. Two really simple examples here. The formality of the communication obviously can change your culture. And the transparency of the communication. Two really simple, well understood examples. Apple and Google, both successful companies within the organizations, widely varying kind of opposite ends of the spectrum to some degree around transparency of sharing information inside the organizations. Um, and so when we think about communications, the reason why chat is so significant is there's two main um, observations we have in this space. The first one is around organizational barriers. These can be functional barriers um, within organization because we often want cross-functional teams. They can be geographical barriers. They can also be um, you know, divisional barriers. As companies grow, change is constant, new barriers form. This is an ever-changing space. The second key trend here that we're looking at is the constant diversification and distribution of our workforce. So by 2020, we expect a full 50% of the workforce may be working remotely. And that's a really large number. Proof points of this we can easily see today. As, you know, personally, as I hire new people into the team, people have a higher expectation of flexibility. People want to be able to work from home. Work-life balance is a thing. People need flexibility around their families. And also, as we grow our organizations, we often need to go to different locations just in order to grow at the rate which we need to. And I think if any of you have tried to hire engineers in the Bay Area, you would understand this. It's a tricky problem. Um, so the two insights here that we had, um, and the chat really solves for, is cohesiveness of team communication and fluidity of communication within those. So the first one is, how do we bring people together who may be working across distances, working remotely, working from home? Um, how do we bring them together and make the team feel like it's co-located in one place? And the second thing is, how do we improve the, the informal nature of communication? More rapid, quick, informal conversation. Um, so let's take a look at Hangouts Chat specifically. I'm going to walk you through a few different elements here, because it solves for these two particular cases. And as we walk through, I'm actually going to apologize as this is projecting. Some of the contrast in the display is lost. So um, you, it does look different when you see it on your screen itself. Um, there's three key elements about Hangouts Chat, the three key kind of primitives or constructs. The first is direct messaging. You're all familiar with direct messaging. Billions of direct messages are sent every day. We use it for family and friends. It's common in, in social areas. And also, we've been using it in the workplace for years since AOL Messenger and ICQ, and like it's been around for a really long time, it's a well understood mechanism. Uh, one of the product managers on our team, Wendy, Wendy, will step up later today and talk about some of the time saving and efficiency saving features we're adding to direct messaging. But for now, I'm not going to dive into it in more detail. The next two primitives, however, are definitely new to Google in this space, so I want to walk you through them in detail. Um, let's start with team rooms. And this is one area where the contrast is a bit lacking. It's a bit tricky to see on this display. Um, let me walk you through the, UI, the user interface here so that you kind of understand what we're looking at. As you look down the left-hand side, you see that there are rooms listed there. These are persistent team collaboration spaces based around specific topics or teams. And so you see, as a user, I can easily part of, if I'm part of the marketing team, I can easily be in a discussion forum with the marketing team in a discussion forum with the design and marketing team, because we collaborate on some things, in separate project discussions. So these are, the, these are the room concepts. And within each of these rooms, there's conversations flowing here. And one of the things you can actually see is there's a nice box around each of these conversations. There's separate threads of discussion which are going on. 
So within these particular rooms, conversations happen. Files can be shared, um, images, of course. There's um, expressive features like emoji and reactions and things like that. So they're definitely shared, and it's the team working together. And part of what you get here is it doesn't matter if you're sitting next to each other in the same office or if people are working on the other side of the world. This is a very leveling place for people to work so they can all have the same experience and work and collaborate real time in the same space. Um, now the threading element we have here, so because these are clustered into threads, into discussions around particular areas, it solves a couple of significant problems that you would otherwise see in team chat products, large group chats. The first one is around ongoing parallel discussions. It's very hard to have interleaved discussions with anything larger than a four or five person team. Any large group of people will always tend towards multiple parallel discussions in a single place. We see this in real life. Um, we also can, of course, so what we can do with this is we can take anything from a small team through to an 8,000 person large discussion forum where we see these working very effectively. We have forums like this in Google today, people chatting through this, and they work extremely well because you can have multiple parallel discussions and you don't overlap those discussions. The second thing that this solves for is what we refer to as the catch-up problem. So if you're not at your desk all the time reading this, so very FOMO-directed, keeping on top of everything, you can be in meetings, you can be out of the office for a while, you can be on vacation for a week, and what you find is when you come back, Rather than trying to read through the exact stream of consciousness of that discussion room, you can simply take a look at the threads that relate to your projects, take a look at what's important to you, and get updated on those particular topics. So these are um, team rooms. The next thing I'll talk here about is our bot platform. So the bot platform is where we bring functionality from outside of Hangouts Chat into the product itself. So it's a, it's a story around content ultimately. A couple of simple examples here for documents. When people share, sorry, when people comment on documents, you get a notification here of the comment and what was commented. So you can easily get up to date and kind of, uh, and see what, what people are commenting on in the document. Very simple. So it's bringing content from docs in here. That's a simple Google example. A simple third party example would be Salesforce. So you can easily get notifications, time to reach out to a customer, look up the customer contact details, and, and log the outcome of a particular call. Very straightforward implementation. It's bringing workflows that those teams normally work through from multiple different products into this one place, which again goes to the point, making it easier to work remotely or across distances. Um, the third example here is around, it's actually really simple to create bots for your own uh, teams. So very simple to create bots using Google Cloud Platform. It's a, a combined platform where doing natural language processing and other things very straightforward. And one of our customers is going to step up here and chat to you about what they've done in this space in a moment. Uh, next point here. As you would expect, deeply integrated with G Suite. Um, it's Google Chat is a G Suite core service. There's integration all around here with the different elements. Um, some examples. If I share a document with a chat room, we look at who has permissions to the document, uh, who are you trying to share it with, and we can automatically fix those permissions. So you don't end up in this standard workflow of share the documents, someone tries to access, they request access, you get an email, you click on the email, you give them access, and they have to come back at some point later to try and access that document. So it's simply fixed in the beginning. Optimized workflow that's only possible because we're part of the suite. Um, another thing here which I'll mention is around the backwards compatibility with the previous version of Hangouts. So Hangouts is used by, the old version of Hangouts is used by a lot of you here. It's widely adopted across G Suite users. What this means is you can take individual teams, move them across to the new product, um, but they're not in an island unable to communicate with the rest of the company. All the existing direct messages and the group chats that you had previously will flow into the new product, so they're still, they're still in contact with the rest of the organization. Very simple migration of, of your organization across this. Um, a few other points here. So Hangouts Chat is built for enterprise. What we mean is that from a policy perspective, we've thought about how you might like to configure this to work for your organization. Things such as, uh, data retention. How long do you want to keep messages 
in rooms or in direct messages, how does that work for your organization? Um, history settings, what are the votes for those for individual users? Vote integration, so very, if you're an enterprise customer, easy to do a lot of e-discovery things, so legal holds, long-term archiving of content, obviously strong security as you would expect from a G Suite core service, and HIPAA and GDPR compliance. And the final point I'll make here, which is quite significant um, and probably, uh, I would say, important for all of you, this is completely available for all of you today, globally, at no additional cost. So everybody using basic business, enterprise, and EDU versions of G Suite can instantly go and start using this today. There's nothing, there's nothing to be done, just start using it. Um, available in 28 languages, so truly a global product. Um, it's also not different tiers of the product. So you get the full version always. So 8,000 people in a room, there's no artificial limits across the product. Uh, lots of client support. And finally, I'll talk about inclusivity. We've designed this to be inclusive of everybody in an organization. So strong screen reader support across these devices, but also on Android and OS, iOS. Um, so let me summarize here. Hangouts Chat can definitely change the way you and your teams work, um, particularly across distances for remote teams, but ultimately the, the transparency and the fluidity of the conversations. It's deeply integrated with G Suite, it's built for enterprise, and it's available globally at no additional cost. And so what I'm gonna do now is introduce one of our customers. So Jordi Ademe is the Chief Technology Officer of Resuelve. He's gonna to chat to you about how Hangouts Chat has changed the way they work and the impact it's had to their organization. To introduce Resuelve, I'll play a quick video. Resuelve eh, es una reparadora de crédito que lo que busca es ayudar a las personas que cayeron en una situación de sobreendeudamiento. Empezamos tres, hoy somos 1,200, tenemos 25 oficinas en cuatro países del mundo. Noté que había un problema en, en la comunicación y colaboración entre los equipos. Y luego, bueno, teníamos ya gente en Colombia. Entonces, ¿cómo hablábamos con ellos? Una de las primeras cosas que hizo Jordi cuando llegó fue decirnos, no, es que nos tenemos que cambiar a G Suite. O sea, la forma en que todo está integrado te ayuda a colaborar de una forma mucho más rápido. Lo, lo más valioso para mí es que sea transparente. O sea, no tienes que pensar si voy a usar Google Docs o si voy a usar Sheet o si voy a usar Chat. Eh, en comparación al correo y las eh, cadenas gigantescas que se hacían, el chat por su formato te obliga a ser mucho más concreto, más rápido, ir al punto y a tener una velocidad de respuesta mucho mayor también. ¿no? O sea, estás hablando en el chat y le dices, oye, necesito verte a la cara para explicarte esto, para que me lo expliques bien porque no estoy entendiendo nada. Pues, oye, métete, ahí está, rápido. Y se meten las dos, tres, cuatro personas, es increíble. La gente nueva de nuevo ingreso adopta estas herramientas de manera natural y se vuelve gente Resuelve desde el día uno. Yo le recomendaría a otras empresas como Resuelve que definitivamente hicieran la inversión y se mudaran a Google Cloud. No solamente yo soy, también tenemos toda la infraestructura de Google Cloud y les va a ayudar a crecer sin dolor. Thank you, Matt. Hello, everybody. I'm Jordi. I'm the IT guy at Resuelve and I can fix your computer. Don't worry. So what's Resuelve to Deuda? It roughly translates to we resolve your debt, just like that. And what we do is we help people who cannot pay their debts anymore, people who cannot pay even their minimum monthly payment on a credit card. And how do we do this? If you ever come with us, we help you doing two things. First, we will get you a discount on your debt from your creditors. In Mexico, we are able to get discounts that average around 78%. That's a lot of money. But we know you've been struggling a lot with this debt. And chances are you haven't saved any money. So we'll, together we will create a savings plan so you can get out of this debt. So we will anal analyze your situation and together we will come with a, we'll see how much money you can really save on a monthly basis. The funny thing is this thing started with the financial crisis in 2008. Back then, people were having trouble paying their debts all over the world, and Mexico was not the exception. So our two founders came up with the idea of bringing this business model to Mexico with the mission of helping Mexicans pay their debts. Over the last couple of years, we've been working really hard in our global expansion. We started four years ago. We opened our office in Colombia. Last year, we opened Argentina, 
And last month, we just opened Spain. And over these years, our mission has changed a little bit. We no longer want to help only Mexicans. We, we, we now want to help anybody, any, anywhere in the world, who cannot pay their debts. But scaling this, this is going to be a big challenge. Scaling a business and maintaining its culture, the, their, culture their core values and customer experience quality, that's not going to be really easy. I joined Resuelve almost two years ago. Things were not easy back then. We didn't use G Suite or nothing. We used the, the other guy's solution. And we received tons of emails. And suddenly you received an email, and the whole body was plus your name. And that's it. Nothing else. No context. So you had to try and read the, the previous conversation. So you clicked the three bottoms to expand the conversation. You could see the scroll bar getting smaller and smaller, 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 smaller. And the worst thing, you had to read from bottom to top and from left, right to left. That is not a great UX. That doesn't scale at all. So then if you wanted to contact somebody at the office, even if they were at the same office, even across the hall, you had to first find what's their email address or what's even their name. And usually the, the, the only way to accomplish this was to asking somebody else. And when you finally find the, the other party email address, there was an ongoing conversation, an email conversation, agreeing on times, rooms, platforms, and usernames. So pretend let's, let's pretend you, you finally got into the Skype conversation. It didn't work, and it always ended up with somebody saying, hey, let's do this by phone. This is not working at all. So it's not a surprise that one week after I joined Resuelve, we were already switching to G Suite. These two guys in the back, this is a picture when they used to work in the same office. But now they live like thousands of kilometers away from each other. They still need to meet regularly. They still need to work together. But it will be so inefficient, so polluting, and so costly, so, uh, so expensive to fly them all over the world so they can meet. And this is one of the reasons that we love Hangouts Meet so much. This was a common scene during, uh, at the office during, during this summer. These are three girls from uh, three different countries discussing something about the New Year's party or something. No, actually, they're fighting over who's going to win the World Cup. So sad none of us did, but anyway. <laughs> and two things you might already know about Latinos. We love football. That's pretty obvious, right? We even name our meeting rooms after football stadiums in Mexico and Colombia and Argentina. Everybody loves football. And we're extremely formal. Every email we send has to have an introduction, salutation, three paragraph body, a conclusion, and a farewell. It's like every email has to be a, a, letter, a letter to the king. That will not scale. Definitely, meet us, hang out to meet, brought us together. It was, it's really, really good for complex talks or for long distance calls. But we still had a, an instant communication problem. There's an old Mexican saying that says that everything you buy has to be bueno, bonito, and barato. That's a pretty rough translation. And before there was Hangout Chat, we tried every chat solution available at, at the time. We tried Slack, then we tried River, we tried WhatsApp, Telegram, IRC, Jabber. We even tried a blockchain chat solution. But transaction fees ended up being too expensive. <laughs> that isn't true, actually. But. We did try every chat solution at the time, but some of them were really expensive, some of them were no high quality, some of them, I don't know, none of them met these three requirements until we found chat. And today I spend one of, most of my day on chat. I rarely send an email to a Resuelve employee anymore, but I don't seem to be alone. Last month at Resuelve, 83% of our internal communication was done via, via chat. We still send tons of email, but that number seems to be going down every day. And how hard could it be to introduce a new tool to 1,200 employees? It was really, really simple, so easy. This is what we did. The engineering team, we, did, we tried the tool for a couple of weeks, and it was so obvious this was what we were looking for. After that, we just created a global room, invited the whole company, and that's it. Everybody was in chat. We didn't do anything else. I swear that. And hold on. <laughs> so one of the thing, the other things I really liked is you didn't have to create any accounts. Everybody was already there because it's all already integrated in G Suite. We didn't have to install any software on anybody's computer. That's really nice. We didn't have to train anybody. 
we didn't have to create manuals or everything. It felt like people just knew how to use it already. And the best, we didn't have to pay any extra for this. That scales. Now that chat is widely adopted throughout the company, some groups started to appear. Especially organically, some support groups appeared. People want answers. So tech support groups appeared, HR support groups, uh, even local sports team organization groups appeared. And we use chat for everything. We even use it to find out what's for lunch at the dining room today. But we had a problem. We noticed that some of these questions were being asked a lot, repeatedly. It's OK to answer a question once, even twice. But having the same question answered over and over and over again, that is not efficient. That's, that doesn't scale. Trying to solve this, we try the, the knowledge batch approach, approach. And we created a lot of documentation, and we send the people over there. But people have specific questions. They don't want to read a whole document to find out if we negotiate with American Express or not. They just want a simple yes or no question. So in one of our monthly hackathons, a huge team of one developer was working on a, on a personal assistant bot in Hangout Chat. And so Coyote was born. What is Coyote? Coyote is a bot that we built for Hangout Chat. It's your personal assistant for your resuelve life. It can be your personal doctor, your personal chef, your personal bookie. It can be whatever you want it to be. It can answer many questions about your, your resuelve life. Simple questions like, how many vacation days do I have left? It says that I only have five days left. Or more complex stuff, like, hey, Coyote, do we negotiate with American Express? This seems to be a really straightforward question, yes or no. But there's more to it. Coyote knows you live in Spain. So Coyote is going to tell you about American Express Spain, not American Express Colombia or Mexico. Okay? Coyote is really, really smart. But there are some times that questions get really, really tricky, and not even Coyote knows the answer. This is a real situation we had a couple of months ago. There's a Mexican guy living in Argentina that had debts with some Mexican guy, banks. Can he join the program from Argentina? This has never happened before. Not even Coyote knows the answer. Nobody knows. So what to do? So even if I don't like it, uh, humans can come in handy from time to time. And we have a, <laughs> uh, a room where a so what we do is we have a room called Coyote Answers where a team of highly trained humans take care of these matters. What we do is Coyote gets the, an the question, and then it will send the question back to this room. People will read, will read the question. They will come to a final conclusion and send the answer back to Coyote. Coyote will learn the answer, and then will send it back to the user. To the, user. the cool thing is Coyote will actually learn the situation, not just the, the question and the answer, not just the phrasing. So the next time we have this same situation, Coyote, even if they ask in a, in using different phrasing, Coyote will know what to answer. Coyote scales. Coyote is smart. How did we build Coyote? It was pretty easy. We are using, obviously, Hangouts Chat. It's our front end for users and for the Coyote Answers chat, chat group. We built it using an Elixir application. It's uh, that we deploy with Docker and Kubernetes in GCP, obviously. And we, we use Dialogflow as our backend for natural language processing. This is how we can be sure that to answer the same question with different phrasing. You can easily have this bot up and running in 15 minutes, an MVP, of course. It was really, really easy. And this is the team of Coyote trainers, or tamers, as they like to be called. There are around 40 people from all areas in the company, from IT, from marketing, sales, human resources, consumer service, everything. And they're they are training Coyote just because they want to help. Nobody asked them to do it. They are not expecting anything in return. It's really amazing what people can do when they have a clear mission. In this case, they just want to train Coyote. And just like that, we have a clear mission as well. We're just getting started, but we want to help people all over the world pay their debts. It's a long road ahead. It won't be easy. I know we will make mistakes, we will fall, and we will back, get back up again. But with partners like Google and tools like Hangouts Chat, I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to accomplish it. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Wencha. I'm a product manager on Hangouts Chat. I might move around a little bit beyond this corner, so if you can't see me, please 
holler or say something. So today, I'm excited to showcase upcoming features that empower our mission of building happy and productive teams. We want to help you have fun, we want to help you focus, and we also want to help you be more productive. So let's start with fun first. Can everyone raise their hand if they used an emoji at least once in the past week? Cool, that's a lot of you. And that's not surprising because almost everyone online today uses emojis or some sort of visual expression. Fun fact, last Tuesday was National Emoji Day. Emojis are also not just about fun, they're also good for engagement. For example, using emojis in your Gmail subject lines can help drive a 20% increase in engagement. Expressive communication is also not just important for the social and consumer world. They've proven to be important in the workplace as well. Communication styles have evolved, and oftentimes people even prefer expressive communication styles over simple text. Emojis, in particular, are a fun and effective way of accurately representing your thoughts and feelings. So you can build stronger personal connections with your team. At Hangouts Chat, we offer efficient emoji search at your fingertips. So you can find the perfect one that expresses how you feel in the moment. To take it a little further, Today, I'm excited to introduce a new feature called Emoji Reactions. This new feature allows you to quickly and creatively react to any message to show support, humor, or empathy. You can celebrate good news. You can acknowledge a request. You can also take a quick poll, amongst many other things. We ultimately believe that this feature will go a long way in helping you build team culture and also help everyone feel included. So I'm gonna show you two examples of how you could use this feature on your team. These are examples taken from my personal experiences using reactions on our team. So for this first example, I want you all to imagine a common scenario. You're a newbie, you're joining a team for the first time. How would you like to be introduced? Email and chat are definitely two ways to do that, but let's see how this might work with reactions. And in case you're wondering, do people really use that many reactions? The answer is yes, at least on our team. Now let's look at another more serious example. Imagine this time you're working on a big document and you just want to get a quick sense for how everyone feels before you send it off. Again, you could have long back and forths, either via email or chat, but you could also use reactions to take a quick, clean poll. So Stanley here wants people to give him a thumbs up if they approve and a stop hand if they feel like there's something that needs to be changed. So I just showed you two examples for how this feature can be used, but I look forward to seeing what you do. Let's switch gears a bit and talk about focus and productivity. Our CEO, Sundar, is a great advocate of digital wellness, saying that technology should improve life and not distract from it. So how can we build technology that is both effective and responsible? At Hangouts Chat, we want to build tools that help you focus and help you scale. The current digital landscape is challenging for those seeking to maximize efficiency. As most of you know, context switching, multitasking, these are daily challenges to productivity. For example, hearing a mobile notification makes you three times more likely to make a mistake, even if you're not even checking your phone. And once you are interrupted, it can take you up to 23 minutes to get back on task. 
That's a lot of time. We want to help you manage your attention. With Do Not Disturb, you can turn off notifications for any period of time. So you can just focus on getting things done. Choose anywhere from 30 minutes to up to eight hours. For all other times, working hours allows you to set your own schedule. So you can figure out what is the right balance for you when it comes to balancing between work and home. Gain control of your own schedule by deciding when you want or don't want to be engaged and don't want to receive notifications. We believe that disconnecting from work at home is just as important as getting things done. So quick recap, do not disturb working hours. They help you focus, they help you disconnect. But we want to help you do even more. Every day, people are juggling multiple different tasks. And it can be hard to always be productive and still responsive to your teams. So what if we could help reduce your effort on a lot of these tasks and accelerate your speed? That way, you can spend more time doing things like solving complex problems or thinking of new ideas or executing on strategy. What if Hangouts Chat could genuinely and intelligently anticipate your needs in the moment. The great news is, as Matt mentioned earlier, Hangouts Chat weaves together products across G Suite, meaning that we can expand your capabilities beyond just messaging. Our deep integrations mean that we can provide you the right tools at the right time. I'm going to talk through three ways in which we do this today. One is around how we help you manage your documents more effectively. Another is around how we can help you schedule meetings easier. And lastly, around how we can help you respond faster. So documents first. Matt mentioned that we have a bot platform. And this platform, again, allows us to bring together capabilities, both from G Suite and outside. That way, you can customize your own workflow. One notable example of a G Suite bot is the Drive bot. I imagine most of you have collaborated on a document at some point. And the challenge is you don't always know exactly who you want to share the document with and also what kind of permission they should have. Do you only want them to view the document because you don't really want them editing it? Or do you want them to be a fully active collaborator with you? The good news is you don't have to worry about that anymore because the DriveBot will send you a direct message anytime someone wants to access your document, in addition to also notifying you of any comments. That way, you can stay on top of all of your documents without having to change or disrupt your workflow. Again, I want to remind everyone that this is all happening in real time. And if you don't think this is a big deal, our studies have shown that granting access is eight times faster using the DriveBot in Hangouts Chat. Meetings, everyone's favorite. So my personal challenge is just around scheduling meetings in general. And it's even more difficult when it involves many different people across different time zones. That's where the MeetBot comes in handy because it uses machine learning intelligence and natural language processing to automatically schedule meetings for everyone in the chat room with you. So again, I don't have to worry about going to my Google Calendar. I don't have to worry about leaving chat. It automatically does all of that for you. I have one more feature to talk to you guys about around how we can improve your productivity. I think at the end of the day, we all wish we could just simply do things faster and save time. And I think that responding to chat messages or messages in general is one definite area of improvement. There are many opportunities where we can probably provide a quick response or input to our team and not keep them waiting. That's why today I'm excited to announce a new feature called Smart Reply in Hangouts Chat to help increase your speed 
and your efficiency. Smart Reply in Hangouts Chat uses the same machine learning intelligence as Smart Reply in Gmail. So for those of you who've already used Smart Reply in Gmail, this feature is going to feel very familiar to you. Our technology is able to understand the context and situation of your messages so that it can automatically suggest three potential responses. You can select any of them to respond right away, or you can customize it further, like in this example here. I'll show you one more example for how we can use Smart Reply. And I hope this one will be relatable to a lot of you. So if you ever find yourself running late to a meeting, it can be a bit of a stressful situation because you're on the move and your team might still be pinging you on Messenger or on chat saying, hey, where are you? Are you going to make it? And wouldn't it be nice if in that moment you had the ability to respond quickly and let them know that you're on the way? just introduced five different features today around how we can help you have fun, how we can help you focus, and how we can help you be more productive. And we're going to continue innovating and building many more. What I want you to remember from today is this. Hangouts Chat is here to transform the way you work through our deep integrations across G Suite. We are built for the enterprise, and we're free. So at the end of the day, we want to be your single workplace within G Suite, connecting all of your productivity tools in one place so that we can help you be your best self and do more along the way. Thank you. Thank you.